It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. G'day everyone, welcome along to episode 18 of Sunday Streams with Trademate Sports where we answer your betting questions, discuss both new and old betting strategies, talk about how to best use the Trademate Sports software and welcome on guests from around the betting industries. So please uh, please start sending through your questions, comments. As you can see today, we have the the great Neil Shari's come back <laughs> to join us on Sunday Streams. Uh, for those who don't know Neil, he is a professional sports better. How are you, buddy? Very good, mate. Yeah, really good. How's things with you? Oh, very strong, mate. As always, a beautiful Monday morning here in Australia. Sun shining. It's always a beautiful skies. Monday morning. Then. Oh, mate, you just you can't beat this place. You can't beat this place. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, we will shortly get to what you've been up to, but I'll just harp on again. Please, guys, send your uh, any questions you have for Neil or for me or just any like random things you want to get off your chest. Uh, we are always here to uh, yeah to join in the conversation. But mate, how's how's things? It's been I think the last time you came on the podcast or came on the one of the live streams was probably around the Euros. So it's been it's been a couple of months, but. Yeah, what's been happening, mate? What have you been up to? Yeah, I mean, I'm in a different country now. Um, so we're just kind of settling back to life in London. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a tough adjustment. There's been kind of a lot going on. And uh, um, yeah, so kind of time-wise, it's been really difficult just to kind of get stuff done. But kind of now things are kind of calming down a little bit. And um, yeah, raring to go. Lots of exciting plans for the future and yeah. Uh, um yeah lots of kind of little things going on in the background but uh yeah things good yeah i i i want to talk about a little bit about how the euros went for you because that was a i think that was an interesting time for you because you i don't know am i completely wrong it was like one of the first times where you kind of like really just honed in on pricing things up yourself um i guess like realize i would say like specialize that like just really specializing in something for a for a month of your life basically and, and almost becoming an expert at the euros in a way like um am i am i completely wrong this is like one of the first times you've done something like that yeah i mean i mean i've i mean i've followed tournaments before in the past and you know i mean but that was like as a kid you know the sticker albums and with the uh you know, if you get the wool charts over in Australia, you know, like when, when there's a World Cup that comes out and you follow the teams and um, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, no, this this time around, you know, since, since I've sort of been betting seriously, this was the first time I'd, um, yeah, kind of really devoted it. Because obviously, you know, a lot, a lot of what I do is kind of, you know, based on price action. It's not necessarily specific to one sport. Obviously, football is my favourite sport to watch. Um but again, you know, just kind of doing that, uh, I think it was a really interesting experience. And um, yeah, it was great. You know, I learned a lot, you know, just just having the, um, um, you know, the, the streams with, with you and George, Nigel, Tony. Um, am I missing anyone else? Did anyone else come on in the meantime? I think that was the oh, first Probably, one. mate. <laughs> no, everyone <laughs> came on. <laughs> everyone, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was great. It was great to to really sort of sort of look match by match, go into depth. I think, um, you know, there were some teams there where, you know, they, they were a bit of a mystery, um, you know, any kind of knockout tournament. Um, yeah, and it brought up some interesting debates as well. So I know... Um, you know, let's say that so some of the things that I kind of looked at um, and I had help I'll give a shout out to my friend John L who did a lot of research with me um, on picking out sort of prop bets and stats based uh, bets because um, it's not everyone's cup of tea um, but that was where I was kind of quite, kind of quite an interest um, and where I was able to kind of pick up you know what I thought was a reasonable bit of value uh, and I tipped you know I think myself and and George as well tipped up uh, Italy to win so if anyone followed that that was a very nice return I think I got odds of 12.5 uh, uh, mm. on them at the beginning of the tournament um, well just before you know they, they kind of steamed in a little bit and um, yeah no it was great I think yeah I mean what about for yourself like how, how did you find the Euros? Yeah I mean I, I just 
I, I just really enjoy doing the live streams with you guys. I mean, if, if I hadn't been doing a live stream every day with you guys, I, I would have, you know, rarely been involved with it or, you know, not really watched it too much. I would have, I would have probably waited until the, the knockouts and started watching some of the big games there. So, um, it's it was one of the times where I was just like, fuck, I want to be over in Europe right now. Like it's the, it really <laughs> is the place to be, uh, during those summer months when you've got a massive tournament like that on. But like, one of the things I wanted to say was, it's kind of similar to what we do with the preview betting previews we do every week on uh, the Premier League or European football in general. Like a lot of people don't don't listen to them because it's you know it's not uh, evergreen content or whatever. Like you know, if we're talking about Arsenal Tottenham last weekend, like there's no point in listening to what we think about Arsenal and Tottenham this weekend. But if you do watch them every week. Like it's more than just giving you guys, you know, whether it's going to go over, under, or what team's going to win. Like the the and it, and it's similar to to what we we're saying about the Euros. Like the, there's little things that Nigel will say, or you will say, or George or Tony will say, and 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 and, and they'll apply to this game we're talking about, but they'll also apply to for just about everything you do in sports betting. So. Um, yeah, I, I think I think although like it's it's you know it's daily content and it's and it's basically useless the day after. By listening to those things, you can you can buddy you can pick up on some on some stuff, some really smart stuff about how people are pricing up games. And uh, yeah, I, I always yeah if if you're not really interested in the in the betting, I mean I think Tony's one of the Tony like what before Tony was coming on the podcast more regularly, he, he was always saying to me like I listen in every every week i i take absolutely no none of your betting tips or anything. <laughs> like I, I don't bet on anything that you say but i listen in just to hear yeah, yeah. how people go about their process of, of finding bets etc so yeah 100 oh, yeah, yeah it's i mean i, I think obviously look, it is not going to be around bush is about kind of making money and being able to make a, a second income but um you know what i enjoy about this rather than let's say um so you know i i dabble in like um cryptocurrency as well that's an interest of mine but you know this is my passion i really enjoy this uh, because we, like you say the, the there's an intellectual element to it you know you you see how people are thinking i remember like like you mentioned i remember i think last year I got, was it either morecambe or macclesfield i remember nigel was really keen on them to get promoted and and something he said you know kind of stuck with me sounds simple but it's you know it's simple in 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 theory but in practice you know this is what maybe separates the kind of professional mindset is he was saying look you know their price drifted um you know or you know if a price drifts but if you if you've got the opinion and you're confident on your choice you know that's an opportunity you reback them you know you reback them at a better price um which i think runs contrary to you know how some people kind of think about it and yeah picked up loads from um sort of, sort of t how you know, tony's kind of knowledge of the teams uh you know uh, george how he kind of you know how he, lo he loves his stats and you know you, you can get an idea of the the kind of methods that people use and find something that kind of fits how you think about the game so i quite enjoy you know when i've signed up to tipsters that i don't always read them but um but i like tipsters who actually give like a kind of full detailed uh you know synopsis a kind of preview of, of what they're betting on because you know if the bet doesn't come in fair enough but if if i like their reasoning you know i'm i'm, I'm not going to begrudge the uh, yeah. the tip at least i'll kind of understand how they came to that conclusion or i might find a reason i might disagree as well so i think yeah 100 percent. i think that's definitely the way yeah, we'll talk a little bit more later. Maybe there's a question from Donnie Brasco. It says, hello, Alex and Neil. Neil, you started with 5K and uh, what target are you at now with Trade Mate? Uh, what percentage bet size did you increase as your bankroll increased? And do you follow the Kelly method? So you got about three questions inside one. Yeah, day. I'm just laughing. I've just seen Ryan's question come through as well. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a good question, uh, Donnie. That's your real name. Um, so actually, this is this has been quite interesting. This is something um, Alex has actually helped you know me to think about this. Is um, so I've reached a kind of a peak of about forty five k pounds, um, but I had a horrendous run, um, you know, which wiped off you know uh, most of that kind of boom. So I'm back around. Um, 20k at the moment uh, a lot of that was due to a few specific book bookmakers um so 
yeah, so basically my bank call is about 4x at the moment. Um, it was kind of close to 8x. Um, but I think if, if you follow any of the videos I did before, you could see from the graphs that I was doing, I was kind of way above EV. This was going to happen at some point anyway, but it doesn't make it any easier when it does. Um, but something, you know, so, so Alex has touched on in his, his streams before is kind of, you know, spending time using the big data tool, um, looking at, you know, those edges, you know, is it actually beating the closing line? So that's something I've, I, I've taken a step back from that kind of scattergun uh, approach I had before and kind of rethought it a little bit with some specific bookies. So I'm doing loads of different sims, different odds ranges, kind of time frames uh different sports i mean it's a big pro project it is time consuming um so i'm kind of doing a little bit at a time and not you know i've got um people you know, who kind of help me out with that as well so i'll give a shout out to uh john l and and uh and, and darren as well um but you know ultimately that's going to save money that's going to kind of increase profitability so it's something i highly highly recommend but yeah still in profit uh still doing well it's been a good uh week so far I did have to take you know a couple of months off to be honest i was kind of not doing much on trade mate because i was moving country uh because of health reasons and uh i i started a full-time job as well so i didn't have the uh the time to do it but now um you know circumstances have changed so um yeah that's where that's where i'm at now so yeah, yeah definitely 5k is a good good start balance um you know again you'll be able to do well as long as you get the volume in you know be able to put that time in each week and you know, will start seeing it grow. yeah are you fiddling with something there mate it's just uh getting a bit of feedback feedback through oh, the, yeah. uh... oh just the wire right. i'll stay yeah, still mate. yeah just ease up there <laughs> mate. Come on. You know, you're getting a bit excited i know it's been your first time on the podcast for a while mate you just need to <laughs> just need to relax um so you'd be still following kelly and and i guess you were increasing your stakes as your bankroll increased too yeah i mean yeah i mean i am following kelly but obviously in in practical the reality of it is you know you can't get the optimal stakes a lot of the time so it's kelly where possible but yeah it's modified it's kind of flat state yeah. not flat stakes but it's kind of rounded stakes yeah. um and look the, the the problem is with a lot of soft bookmakers if if you start betting you know more than a couple of hundred on um, you know, Mongolian second division, um, yeah, you're going to get flagged up pretty quickly. So that that's the challenge, really, is, is is trying to find the sweet spot between the kind of market limits going under the radar um, yeah, and doing that. So I think that's that's an issue as well is scalability. But you don't have to worry about that at the beginning. You know, with, if you start off with five k, that that's the problem that will come kind of later down the line. And by then. The idea is you should have kind of built up the skills to you know maybe take on the exchanges some of the asian books that kind of thing yeah uh smart sports <laughs> trader he's on how are you mate he says uh good to see you neil back on good to see neil back on what's the best disguise to prolong my shop betting fake wig and a mustache enough or is adding the big fake nose optimal i think you need to wear like clothes that haven't been washed in like three or four days kind of a faint whiff of uh you know whiskey or gin uh you know sort of grizzled hair um you know just just start banging coins in the slot machine uh you know that that might serve you well <laughs> from my Fall experience. over as you walk in <laughs> yeah yeah basically you know then they'll, they'll give you the keys to the kingdom pretty much um yeah i mean that's been interesting definitely like sort of going into a shop what's it like in australia like the, the, the you, it, is it, you have like pubs right where you can uh yeah get, that's all we yeah. have really we've got we don't really have like a you know unibet there ladbrokes there coral over there like it's all just one one betting show like, basically like don't you guys have like betting terminals or something like that like i don't know if you have like a general yeah, but it's it's called the TAB, and they're just uh, they're basically in every single like suburb pub or whatever you can think of. So um, I don't know what it's like in terms of limitations because the people operating the or you can do it all automatically from the machine. You don't have to you don't have to log in or anything like that. So it's all anonymous, or you can go up to the counter and put your bet slip in that way. Uh, but even if you go up to the counter and do it, the people taking your bets are bartenders. They're not like 
you yeah. know, they're not like people that have been profiling you. Around. I mean, maybe, you know, they work in the bar and they get told not to, you know, take certain customers' bets. But um, but it's, it, I think it's a pretty different system to what you've got in, in England because I, I could be completely talking out of my ass, but I'm pretty sure you can't get kicked out of the TAB here unless, I mean, they're everywhere. So it's like, I mean, I could go to, I don't know if they like profile you across suburbs, but um, yeah, I've, I haven't heard of people who, who can't go and, Bed at the tab. I mean, the limits aren't great, though. So yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So that's yeah, I mean, sure. that's the thing. I mean, here it's ridiculous. I mean, my within like a so I've got you know two paddy powers within a fifteen minute walk. Um, there's three in the closest town, which is five minutes away. There's two in the other town, which is like another five minutes away. So that's just paddy powers, and there's bet fres. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. Um, and I think before, because I wasn't really interested in betting, I didn't realise sort of how many. And, and a lot of them have closed, so there were even more yeah. before. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely an avenue that, you know, I'm, I'm being uh, you know, sort of keen to exploit something that wasn't available to me in Qatar, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I think it's fascinating. But, yeah, I mean, what, you know, Ryan's saying, it is interesting. You know, you kind of, there is a, there's an etiquette to shop betting, there's sort of, sort of, like I suppose tactics you can use there, you know, things that might get you flagged up more quickly. Um, but generally, you know, you, you, you get a bit more time, especially if you're restricted to online, there's still value you can take in the shop. So it's, it's a good, good option to have. Yeah. Yeah. No. So do you want to speak a little, I mean, I've got another, I don't even know if this is a question from Sophie. Yeah, she just says what, so what? I mean, I mean, I would just say what back. I've got no idea what <laughs> you're talking about, Sophie. So uh, if you want to elaborate more on that, feel free. But, yeah, maybe talk a little bit about uh, betting, betting sh- like just what you're actually doing at the betting shops. Like is it is it much different from what you would be doing if you were sitting at home on the computer or you kind of just like is it just something completely separate you're doing at the shops? Um, the, the, so there's there's some prices that um, change. So, so, the, so the way – a lot of the shops operate they have like you said these kind of terminals which is kind of like a central price which is slightly different from online so you won't always get the same price on those but you do for example paddy power you do get um mostly the same prices on the horses um on the golf um there's other sort of bookmakers that are good for other things i don't want to give i don't want to sorry but i don't i don't, don't want to give too much away Oh, this come point. on, mate. <laughs> Bloody hell, just give your edge away, will you? <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, so there's specific bookmakers that, you know, will do different things. But that's that's what you can kind of explore, you know, if you go in and you have a look around. Obviously, yeah. this is kind of specific to the UK and uh, Ireland as well. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you're using the machines, if you found something that's value, it, you know, theoretically, you know, each machine has a limit. You can kind of um, work your way through the machines um but eventually you know like there's still you know you can't take the piss too much um but it's you know it's, it's a good kind of avenue uh, to go down you know treat the stuff the shop staff well um you know get, you know throw them a um a little tip every now and again if you get a big win but, you know in theory that that helps i have been sort of semi-barred from one uh paddy power already but uh you know so, so far so good on, on the rest but it, you know it is a matter of time um so yeah and i think that's kind of that's been a learning experience as well i mean yeah it's a fine balance it's the same thing as kind of like priming your accounts you know like how much time do you spend doing sort of stupid bets or kind of you know just doing uh, negative ev things before you say on that priming is the funnest thing to do it is so much fun (laughs) mate how good is it just being a mug like you can just you can just i just I go onto the website. I'm just like click, click, click. Just click on all this random shit. Put it in an accumulator. I'm like, fuck. Oh, yeah, fun was that. <laughs> <laughs> and when they come in as well, like if you've got like oh. a bet, you spend hours like researching, and then you just like click buttons, and that's the one that comes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. So what Donnie says. Um, yeah. Some of the odds um, are not the same. It depends on the bookmaker. It depends on the sport, the market um that kind of thing so you'll kind of you'll, you'll see um you know so some some specific things that are and that aren't um 
Yeah, so I mean, it, it's definitely it's, it's a useful kind of avenue to to exploit. Obviously, if you if you live somewhere like I do in London, you know, there's just a kind of um, almost infinite number of places to go to and to to to, to go. You know, if you if you're banned uh, from one place, um, but it, but it is interesting, you know. So again, you you, you can get flagged. You still can't go too crazy so you know i i haven't i've wanted to stake more on some things but you know that that would kind of um sort of raise question marks so yeah you have to kind of find the uh, find a balance to it so it's a big advantage in the uk having that option i don't know what it's like in other countries i think in italy maybe they have some some um you know bookmakers you can go into in russia but i'm not really aware of other places so if anyone is is watching now it'd be interesting to um to see yeah, uh, um, qu question here from Tom. He says, "What are the limits like on the machines in the shops?" Um, yeah, it, it, it depends on the markets. Depends on on what you're betting on, what the liabilities are. But again, you know, if you go into a big shop, there might be five or six machines. So in theory, you could, you know, you, you could use use a few of them if you found something that's of value as well um, or you know, it might go through to a trader. You might be able to, you know, they might. You know, allow you to to put more on yeah okay. that's interesting what gary said here yeah sorry i'll get this one up gary burke says i work in a major bookie here in ireland and every bet over 50 quid must be flagged and a profile added no matter the odds that is very that very seems quite excessive like yeah that's anything yeah so even I if mean, gary even if it's like a um, premier league game or something someone put like 50 quid on man united or something they, they create a profile for that yeah that's uh <clears throat> that sounds a bit ridiculous but um yeah maybe gary elaborate on that a little bit more because uh i mean yeah that seems a bit too low i would maybe say like 200 quid or so. i don't i don't know what it's like over in the uk but um yeah i i don't think i've ever had a any wow. any bet for 50 quid the equivalent of 50 quid over here it doesn't matter what the market ever ever flag up um oh wow yeah so it says every single one or else you get a call from security maybe it's like a uh i assume it's like an internal flag of some point uh, of some sort and then maybe it's their first is it like their first 50 quid bet uh oh, that's interesting so it used to be 250. yeah that's really interesting okay well there you go now you can't bet over 50 quid fellas <laughs> No, obviously you can, but I mean, yeah, uh, it, you want to make sure that first 50 quid bet is like absolute shot. So there's a little tip for everyone. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. He's uh, Arush Sinha. He said, uh, I assume he's talking about you, mate, and not me. He says, is he Indian <laughs> origin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have uh, in Indian roots. Ayush. Yeah, lovely, mate. Um, I was, I was going to say, so, so the betting shops, like, have you, I mean, this is a little bit, I think this is a little bit too nerdy for my liking, but do you, have you done like any calculations or anything like that around, uh, I guess ROI, like time spent in a betting shop versus, you know, sitting on your ass in front of the computer, like it's gonna, you're going to spend more time going, placing shop, shopping bet bets at the shops rather than you know getting up all the bookmakers in front of yourself in the in the, on the computer screen um yeah i mean to be honest you know because i'm already restricted with with, with uh, those bookies online so i don't have that choice necessarily in between accounts you know to do that so rather than kind of having to search you know for, for new accounts all the time this is um convenient i think because i've got you know th three or four in walking distance to me that's um you know that, that's a big incentive it's, it's easy to park where i am so uh, but yeah definitely that's something to consider if i have to sort of um start making trips further out it needs to be kind of worth the the trip so uh generally i'll have a look you know in the morning let's say if there's um, a decent amount if there's like at least kind of three or four horses um yeah. then then I'll, I'll make the trip if there's a golf tournament there, there'll always be plenty of stuff i can get on mm. um and generally i know what i'm gonna bet so it doesn't take me too long to actually go in there and you know i'm there for like maybe 10 minutes you know 10 15 minutes max um so yeah but you know it's, it's a good question because yeah you have to kind of balance it out with you know the time spent 
um, you know, and, and what the return's going to be. But um, yeah, and I'm, and again, you know, just trying to I try and kind of work around it with errands. You know, just there's always some kind of stuff to do, get my shopping done. You know, diapers. Or, yeah, all the good yeah, stuff. you know, just go to a coffee shop, do some work, bring my laptop, and you know. So in the mornings, it's it's quite handy for me because. Uh, I drop my daughter off at nursery and uh, my wife uh, goes to the office twice a week. Uh, so, again, you know, I'm I'm done with that. I'm free from like, you know, half eight, nine o'clock. So then I can just go straight to the bookies, get my stuff done and come home. So in that sense, I don't, yeah, I don't feel like it, it disrupts my day. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 it's a valid point, though, is that you, you do have to kind of think. I, I saw someone in some group recently, you know, showing loads of bet slips for like, you know, $5.00. Ten dollars here or there, you know, he's got this amazing system, and I'm just thinking, yeah, but how much time are you spending, you know, on these like quite a small stakes? So yeah, you've got to kind of work out what's what's worthwhile for you, really. Yeah, another thing you can add in there too, like you know, just going out and you know taking a break from the computer is just exactly. I find yeah. it, I find it really nice to just hop in the car and drive five minutes down the road, or I mean, you know, like you're doing walking even better, like in terms of just clearing your mind and just taking your mind off a computer screen. I think is uh, is something very valuable. Yeah, hundred um, percent gets you out and about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm not going to try. Uh, pronounce this name but he says don't you get restricted at shops for winning as well yeah you do you do um so like i mentioned before so i i, I can't there's one uh, bookmaker i can't take prices on uh, um horses and golf because my bets are being flagged there but they said i'm free to use the machines so they haven't kicked me out completely i ha i do know I, I did read something recently about someone who's basically barred from betfred um any bet fred and if he tries to come in like they, they could call the police for trespassing so it could get to like an extreme level like that as well um but listen again like living somewhere like london i don't know there's like about six million um yeah. paddy powers about 10 million lad brooks like you it, it makes it awkward but um i think the way they operate is um generally you know they, they kind of in a weird i mean again the gary who works with the bookmaker in ireland maybe correct me if i'm wrong but they kind of compete with each other to some extent so um you know each shop kind of maintains its own figures and um it's in their interest you know to ban some you know profitable punters um but i don't know how incentivized they are to alert other shops in that sense at least that's from the conversation i had with one of the shop managers yeah so it's still a world i'm kind of learning a bit more about but yeah of course you, you know pretty much it's it, it's the same but but the, that anonymity um will help you you know it's just obvious things you know paying cash don't use your details um again you know um try and disguise yourself get a fake wig all of that kind of stuff you know that'll all help you might need one soon in real life, actually. Just quietly. Yeah, no, it's true. The hair's it's growing true. back nicely, yeah. hasn't it? Look at that. Look, I mean, you were bald a couple of months ago. It's been a regeneration of sorts. Oh, say. mate, yeah. I need to prepare for the winter. My first winter in, like, seven years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Um, <clears throat> back to the Euros. One question I wanted to ask was, um, I don't know if you're doing, like, too much, like, 1x2 or Asian Handicap or, you know, over under, like, the big markets, but I know you did a lot of player prop stuff. Can you talk a bit about, like, what you were looking back, looking at in terms of feedback on your results? Because player props, it's, um, I assume it's impossible to, like, look at anything outside of your ROI because there's no, like, I mean, the market's not, there's no, like, efficient bookmaker out there putting out, putting out prices on how many passes Harry Maguire does. Um, but then you've got, you know, your big markets where you can certainly look at closing lines and stuff. I mean, myself, if I was, you know, trying to beat the the 1x2 of the Euros or the over-unders, like I seriously would not give a anything about about the, my results. I would just be looking at whether I'm beating the closing line or not, which is probably another argument too because you know, the Euros is sometimes, I mean, in previous international tournaments, people have found that the prices have been quite inefficient there because it's like a one-off event. But anyway, um, yeah, were you looking at anything outside of your ROI in terms of trying to analyse your results? 
Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. Like, um, yeah, like you mentioned with those markets, I know. Um, uh, I think like, uh, Marius and, and Jan, they for the last World Cup. You know, I would be interested to see their take on it as well. Yeah. Uh, the work they did with, with with David in terms, you know, they, they did well out of it. You know, what was the their results compared to the closing line? <laughs> Um, yeah, with these kind of kind of bets, obviously, um, yeah, there's a valid argument. You know, that was a discussion as well with, with uh, Nigel George. They, they, you might get more likely to get your accounts restricted if you're betting purely on those, but you can disguise those kind of bets. You know, put them into bet builders. Um, you know, put, put kind of some kind of short odds selections in there. Um, yeah, in terms of my analysis of it, I this is a good way to try and try and price them up. So. Um, you know the 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 bookies are kind of saying you know this is going to be the the kind of the the midpoint. This will be the kind of the, I suppose the spread, um, and it's just whether I kind of agreed or disagreed. So it's the depth of analysis that they put in there, and yeah, and a, a kind of a, an opinion on how the game would go or uh, what kind of weighting you'd put to those stats. So the way they would let's say for a player passes bet. Um, I think it's something you spoke to Adam about. I don't know if that's been released yet, but um, yeah. yeah, you know, so how, how we would go about that process again is kind of the bookmaker may look at that as averages, right? So there's a lot more effort that will go into the 1x2 and handicap markets or, you know, the, those derivative markets. You know, those are the where the, the most liquidity is. That's where most people are betting. Those lines are going to be quite sharp. These kind of player props, um, sometimes, you know, bookmakers kind of hide behind quite big margins on these but it, you know in, in particular things like passes or tackles or shots or offsides or things like that um you know they might not factor in let's say if a player's missing if there's a change in tactical setup you know if, if the coach wants to do something different um you know if, if a certain player is out of form all these kind of dynamics um you know you, you can look at uh, and that's why something like the passes thing is quite interesting as well, you know, because you, you can kind of anticipate what a game state might be. So sometimes it might go against you. Um, like this weekend, I had a couple, you know, again, where, you know, if, if if a team takes an early lead, then, you know, they might sit back. And, and, and you've got to kind of think of all these things. I don't know all the permutations that bookmakers uh, look at when they price these lines. And because generally they, they put, a, you know, a, decent margin you know it's kind of if you're at bet 365 it's 1.83 either side and yeah. uh, novi bet sometimes it's a bit skinnier you know you get um, 1.87 either side um so you have to be pretty confident so so they aren't always a, a guarantee um but yeah for myself again it's just kind of, i look at kind of the hit rate you know if they're kind of even shots i need to be but they're not quite priced at even shots and i'm looking to get let's say 60 percent um hit rate on these and trying to kind of cherry pick them um especially on unders there's a bias i think for people to kind of you know go on the the overs for passes um you know you might have let's say for the international break will be an interesting one as well you know like if there's a big team that comes up against a minnow um for um, you know, for the big teams, the little teams, you know, they could get a little spell possession, you know, sometime in the game if if the other team's coasting, and that's where you can find kind of you know little edges, I think. So, um, yeah, generally, I'm looking at it at a kind of case to case basis, like kind of how far off I am. So, if I have lost, um, you know, how far off am I? If it's kind of one or two, if it's generally about right, then I'm kind of in in the right direction. Or if if I have won it, you know, has it won significantly? So, really, I'm looking at um, uh, yeah, kind of how far off the uh, that line now, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but did you do much major market betting in the Euros or was it mostly just props? No, it was, a, it was a mix of stuff. So, yeah, so I had the kind of the outrights. I had some kind of group uh, um, bets as well. You've forgotten it already, all the stuff we did. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. um, <laughs> um, there were so many that we did, to be fair. Um, yeah, you know, like group betting. I mean, there were the ones that that were my downfall were the kind of one x twos or the kind of uh, win to nils. There are a few of those where you know, there was like Spain, I think, just did me in for one of them, and um, uh, you know, and the X team to win and under, you know, three and a half 
that kind of thing. So just trying to kind of eke out a little bit of value where possible. Um, yeah, so there was a mix. So I definitely, you know, I would advocate a mix. Sometimes you just say yeah, the odds are wrong. I think, I don't know if you remember that, was it the Belgium-Russia game? I think De Bruyne and uh, Hazard were out. And, like Belgium were just drifting like crazy, like uh, a few days before the game. And yeah, you know, the odds were just totally wrong. So again, I had a sort of hefty back of uh, Belgium because I just thought there's a lot of value in that price. So yeah, I think it's just being flexible and adaptable to it. You know, you could specialise in, in one or two things, but obviously, you know, um, these kind of main markets, I think the advantage of these kind of props is that they don't always follow the movements of the um, the 1x2 games. They're generally priced a few days before the game, these kind of bet builder type things, these, uh, you know, William Hill, your odds. Um, so if there's a kind of shift in the 1x2 price, you can actually find a bit of value in, in those um, in the kind of builder bets. Yeah. No, good point. Very good point. Um, uh, sorry, I probably pronounced it wrong. Is it Ayush? He's uh, he's back. He says, "Do you place bets on cricket matches? If yes, what's your opinion on the sanct- sanctity of the games, especially in twenty twenty leagues?" This, wow, the sanctity. Like, um, you know, are they honest or fixed? Is that what what it kind of means? I mean, a lot of them go. Quite a few go to the wire, kind of suspiciously so, but I wouldn't want to uh, say for sure. I mean, in the IPL, there's been so many games that just go down to the last ball, the last over. Um, yeah, I, I did do a lot of trading on the cricket last year. Um, it's something that does interest me, but I haven't really had the time to follow the IPL this time around. Um, but I do, you know, I, I do do um, bet on cricket, um, not on match odds, but, you know, things again, I've got, a few sources, quite good info on, um, you know, top top batsmen or run lines or, um, again, these kind of um, wider markets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't uh, really follow it much, do you, Alex? Not really. No, I mean, I just watch it when it's on during the summer, mate. I just, you know, yeah. watch the tests and something to before. get you to sleep. Yeah, I love cricket, mate. I think it's a great game. It doesn't put me to sleep, but I can understand why it does for <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, so, I mean, it's 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 like almost it's like a part of a it's like a traditional Australian summer here, isn't it? Like it's it's uh, it's you know part of the fabric of of people's people's summers here. It's a beautiful beautiful thing. Um, what do you think of Odds Jam for player props? Do you know what Odds Jam? Is? I thought Odds Jam was like a comparison website um yeah similar there's similar things to trade. actually I'm, I'm going to be writing an article for them um at some point soon i haven't explored the software uh myself but that's something i'll be doing in the next month or so i think it is sort of are they arbitrage like, software or something yeah i mean it, I, I think it's more tailored towards us betters but i think there's still things you can do if you're based outside there so that's something i'll I'll have a look at but yeah daniel if, if, if you do use it then uh, be good to hear your your opinion on it as well um i'm sure yeah okay yeah so i'm just looking at their website now i've never i've heard of them briefly before but i wasn't sure exactly what they did um <clears throat> all right mate well let's uh let's switch switch topics here and uh well we both kind of wanted to talk a little bit about about psych like the psychology or the the mental the I, I think like the mental health side of of sports betting because I mean you've been going through this as a as a professional sports better you've been going through this for over a year now and I mean I kind of the last what has it been like five months or so um have been betting you know at least half professionally at least like a part-time job doing this so deriving you know, my living out of sports betting. So I can harp on this too. But um, I think we've also talked about this before. But, um, yeah, I just thought it was something interesting to bring back up because, um, yeah, I guess you've gone through a big move overseas and et cetera, et cetera. So maybe I, yeah, just give you the floor, mate, and, yeah, what you wanted to say about the mental health side of things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's kind of something more personal to me. So I've had a bit, you know, difficult time health-wise um, since uh, moving back to uh, the UK. There's been a kind of a lot um, that's been going on. And I think, 
you know with this kind of thing it can be all consuming there's no um you have to set limits for yourself you know otherwise you can kind of burn out and um and you know it can just kind of seem like a bit of a grind so i think it's definitely important to you know to look after your mental health um and then something else we've, we've kind of talked about the kind of mindset of going pro um wanting to do you know to do that is a uh, I think not that not everyone can do it. Everyone can, but not maybe not everyone is willing to do it. Or, you know, is not comfortable with the the idea of of it, and um, you know, to varying degrees. So I think most people would prefer to have like a safety net um, to you know to be able to do something else. I found that I really struggled to do anything. I went back into you know full time work, and you know it didn't work out for me. There's just too much going on, um, you know, family wise and everything else, and actually going back to full-time betting now kind of suits me better even though um there's no safety net at all with what i'm doing um at the same time i, I find that quite liberating i don't know if everyone would necessarily um but that's something to consider as well i don't know like alex obviously you, you're, you're going to be in the middle of an exciting kind of time and it's kind of um to, you know, to do this and then to kind of go back to like a a normal full-time job i think that in itself is a, is a kind of challenge if you're used to having that flexibility and kind of being your own boss and um that autonomy then that's also a challenge to um to look to look out for as well but yeah i, th I think it's really important like the psychology of you know, what you're doing you can have these losing months we've talked about it before um you know, those can be hard to take um you know you, you can kind of invest a lot in it there's no guarantee that you know it would be it will be a success and even when you do start making um gains and you have some success you know you're going to start getting restricted um you might have kind of bookies not playing fair um you know, which has happened to me recently as well so so it can become a bit frustrating sometimes i think it is really important just to kind of you know look after yourself have, have a routine all these things we've kind of mentioned before other guests of yours have have said the same as well so um yeah I, I think it's an important topic i think it's something to you know to definitely address for someone like me um you know i am a bit miserable bastard in the best of times um but this you know this kind of lifestyle suits me i can kind of fit it around my family i think i'd really struggle if i was uh, working full-time having to go to an office and i'd be quite you know, fed up um but at least with this you know I, I i quite enjoy that solitary element of it um and you know if i'm having a tough day whatever you know you can still kind of get some work done and you know maybe not have to sort of face everyone and face face people so that kind of side of it you know if you are kind of more solitary by nature then this kind of line of work is is good but then on the flip side i know something you talked about before as well it can be quite isolated so it's good to have people to bounce ideas off and, um to kind of collaborate with as well so i don't know maybe that's something um it'd be good to get your thoughts on that yeah i i mean i'm sorry i'm just seeing all these questions come through we'll get to them eventually i just want to yeah i think it's just good to talk about this first so we don't uh yeah lose our train of thoughts but um yeah i think yeah, for myself, like it's something that I've really missed, like working, working for TradeMate over here, and also doing, also doing sports betting too. Like both of my jobs are completely isolated. Like obviously work in a team with TradeMate, but I only talk to the guys like once a week, uh, and I spend Monday to Monday to Sunday basically by myself right here in front of a computer with my own like it's no there's no like sitting in our office having a yarn every now and then with your mate and having a laugh about something that went on on the weekend or last night or whatever like there's no uh, interactivity at all so i i completely agree and and it's it's something like the biggest lesson that i've learned ever since taking my sports betting more seriously and earning a living from it is I completely underestimated the the mental the mental strain it has on you because I mean I've been betting for a long time but I was doing it as a side income I mean not even as a side income it was just something that I knew I could make money from and you know why not do it for a bit of fun on the side whilst I work a full-time job so my wins and losses yeah sure they hurt whatever but I mean it doesn't affect 
it didn't it doesn't affect me to the point where i'm like fuck me like i literally made zero dollars or i lost five grand this month kind of thing so um well that's something you said like you you definitely you or unlikely you'd want to just bet full time yeah well i i i've i've definitely said that and and uh, I probably like uh, owe like some kind of apology to you because I remember maybe six months ago or something like that, you were kind of saying how like the hard one of the hardest things has been the the mental problem and the wins and the losses and all that kind of stuff and the down swings and getting over that. And and I think you asked me like how do you get over it? and I'm like oh mate I'm sweet like I don't I don't have any kind of problem with this at all but like that's just because it wasn't a way of me like i i wasn't deriving my food on the table yeah. <laughs> and uh when i'm betting so it's like as soon as as soon as like this became a serious income for me like a way to make a living is like as soon as like it really got to me and i've had like i can i've had two distinct moments that i know where i was like <clears throat> where you can like feel like the stress uh taking over your body almost and like wanting to like basically quit betting or like uh needing to take a take a break or like like really like when it's like affected you to the point where it's like you can't even like you know you can't even make make sense of anything in your head like you're just so upset about certain things that um that it's like yeah it's hard to it's hard to get on with your daily life so um i think one was it was only like a couple of weeks in and and it was the it was the <clears throat> do you remember we had all those bets on like denmark and belgium to win the oh, to yeah, win yeah, the, yeah. the group and all this kind of stuff and i had i had all these bets and they were all like interlinked basically <clears throat> and it was either like lose a couple of thousand or win a couple of thousand and it's so stupid looking back because that happens to me every day like i lose thousands every day and i win thousands every day like this so it's just a normal day for me but for some reason uh this one like really got to me and i remember i was out on a bike ride <clears throat> while russia were playing uh denmark and it was like denmark needed to win by x amount of goals and belgium needed to beat russia or something like that um and and yeah i i oh know belgium were playing someone else maybe but anyway i just remember like i was halfway through a ride and i had to like get out my phone to to check <laughs> to check the scores and i saw denmark were winning by a few goals and it was like the biggest relief that i've ever that's like ever overcome me um and, and then just like every monday i go in and do all my numbers for the week and there's been times where i've lost like you know four four thousand five thousand dollars in a week for consecutive weeks like Oh, I'm happy to be quite open about it now because at first I was just embarrassed about it. But um, I think after like three months of doing this part time, I was down seven thousand dollars, which is like the, just the worst thing ever. Like, I mean, imagine like you work for three months on something, no. twenty hours a week, let's just say, and and you've lost seven thousand dollars. Like, seven thousand dollars isn't gonna like kill someone but like mentally that is like the word that for me like I, I was uh i was seriously reconsidering everything but like the last the last month so i think i've been doing this four months now the last month like i've i've I'm, I, don't, I don't really want to come on and say like how much money i make because i think it's ridiculous but um like it's uh i've made a lot of money like like it's it's been like a ridiculous upswing like it's <laughs> so it's like it's just funny how it all how it all how it all can turn around and i remember i was talking to uh, anthony kaminskas who people don't know he's a he's come on the podcast a few times um just talking to him about like i don't know how i can how much longer i can do this mate and he's like he's like the first thing that you need to get right is your head because you know what you're doing is profitable you just need to get your head right and i was always like mate but you're not the one sitting there in in x amount of dollars lost like i was like i was almost getting like frustrated that he was like making it seem like such a easy thing to kind of get over and i'm not saying that he was coming from that kind of path but he was i mean he's completely right and, and and i'm sure like you would have said the same thing to me and lots of, i would i should have been saying the same thing to myself and you know 
they're all completely right. It's it's uh, it's all turned around now, and I'm sure it'll go back down eventually again. But uh, it just it just shows that how far you can get caught in your head, uh, and yeah, how much of a struggle it can be. Yeah, no, no, completely. I think yeah, no, it's like a really honest way of, uh, of looking at it, and um, yeah, I think that's why like sort of these people who sort of green screen all the time on on Twitter just really piss me off because actually, what would be more insightful for people is if they showed like a massive loss, but kind of followed it up with like, okay, look, this was the bet. This is why I did it. I'd still yeah. take the same odds. I'd st- still take the same bet. You know, a hundred times. It's just this time it didn't it didn't work out. And it's having that faith in your system. And that's the problem with people watching this or, you know, follow trade mate starting off. There's that kind of, um, I suppose, that nervousness in the beginning. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You don't know what's going to happen over the first, like, couple of months. Um, but if you've seen, you know, if you've seen the wins come in, then you build that confidence. But then if it starts turning against you, it's hard to break out of that. So that's something that happened to me over the summer. Like, again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, my bankroll was about 8x and it's gone down to about 4x. It's like every day, you know, like for the first couple of weeks, I was like, no, I trust my system, trust my system. But then it was just, just, every, it just kept going wrong. And that's when, you know, these kind of the seeds of doubt start appearing and, and you get kind of, you get kind of stuck, you know, you're not sure whether to move forward. Maybe you start rethinking the bets you're taking um i don't know if this happened to you alex but you know when in these kind of downs i, I try my best not to but i mean i end up taking you know maybe taking a little bit less risk you know maybe kind of like you know not going for such high odds if i'm in the middle of a kind of downswing like that just to smooth out the variance a little bit um uh, but then once you start you know second guessing yourself you know if you if you don't take that high odds that's probably the week that it's going to come in you know um and Again, that's that's the human element to it. You know, that's why kind of some of these bots that work, you know, they're, they're quite efficient. You know, or if you just kind of fo- follow a trade, mate, you know, and you just, you know, did all those, those trades um, over time, you know, that ROA is, is proven. But yeah, when you're in the middle of it, it's, it's it's not so easy to to look at that way. So yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, someone like Anthony, you know, again, he could, you know. Um, lose a hell of a lot on one one trade but he's because of the years of experience of doing it doesn't sort of phase him in that that sense i think that's the thing the longer you know it goes on you know the the more you get there like today you know, there's a couple of things in the golf i mean you know again i have a few people i you know work with share information with they're always checking like you know to see or they style their players or you know get that that's something i mentioned it in the beginning and maybe it's just not my style but i find it helpful i just i don't even bother like looking at what i bet because i can't change it and i'm not going to cash it out so i'd rather just you know do something else and then just check afterwards you know if it's come in or not and that that kind of removes some of the uh the emotion to it but yeah this is the thing with the betting and trading they're just two totally different things like you know there's some people who are just kind of maybe they prefer to to trade to manage that risk that liability and smooth yeah. out that variance um it's, it's, yeah it's not easy no 100 percent. i think anthony said uh he went on the smart betting club podcast and i'm i'm pretty sure i could be completely wrong but i think he said something like i think pete asked him uh like what's your one tip you can give to everyone at the end of the podcast like a real general question <clears throat> and anthony said like if you want to be a professional you need to get your head right and I was like, I mean, I could give people a million more tips than that, but like he's he's completely right. I think like uh, <laughs> if there's one thing I could have told myself five months ago, or whatever, like that I I need to work on, it's that, and I still hundred percent need to work on. I mean, I bought, I had Jared Tendler on the podcast, who's a mental mm. game coach for poker players and sports betters, and also people that invest in stocks or trade the market. Um, I bought that book in in uh, he came on the podcast and I bought his book that came out in I think it came out in like February or March or something like that, um, maybe a bit later. But um, you know I'm, I'm I'm still like I still haven't finished that and it's and it's and like we talked about how important it was, but you can just you can just get lazy in your life and <laughs> and for, you know you're you're more focused on what what UFC fights are on this weekend rather than thinking 
thinking long term and thinking, well, maybe before you start looking at some fights, you should probably like get your mental health in order and get your get like your your brain in order and get that on track before you start trying to price up X versus X. So that's uh, <clears throat> that's something I 100% need to to get get onto it. <laughs> Um, no, you do. Yeah, tools, yeah. tools like I mean, you you use your brain for everything every day. Like it it affects your decision making. Like you were saying before that when you're going through a bad run, you take smaller odds because you don't want those those big swings. That could be a really stupid decision. Like yeah. that, that's that could be a terrible decision to make because you know, <clears throat> as we know, like most of the time the ten to one shot doesn't win, but because you're taking plus EV bets over time, it's going to, it's going to help you out big time. And, and that 10 to one that you skipped for a couple of weeks, just because your, your mental game wasn't strong. Um, it, it affects your profitability. So it's amazing how, like when, when you're under mental pre- pressure that you make stupid decisions, I'm not saying what you did was stupid, but you can make <laughs> poor, <laughs> you can make yeah. poor decisions. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 hundred percent. I mean, it's like it's like the the sims that you were doing, right? As in, you, the, the, and even I've had to look at this. You know, for some bookies, you, you know, you're thinking, right? You know, the edge is going to be the same. Or if I'm betting, you know, one point five to evens, then you know, you're beginning getting this. But actually, you know, if you're betting two point five to three point five, you're getting a good ROI on that. You know, that's the bet. You know, those are the bets you should be taking. Um, but you might lose three or four of those in a row. You know, that, but. Um, again, yeah, it's just kind of not you know, um, deflecting the process too much. But like you said, it's just, just there's only so much time you have. And I think one of the things about, you know, just say doing this full time is, um, especially now, I'm, you know, I cut back on the things that I'm trying to do. Like you said, you know, you're trying to finish this book. I've got like a, a stack of books that I need to get through. And um, what you end up doing is kind of what's what works, what you know works. And... I think that's something now definitely I, I was doing much less of now than I was before is less kind of experimenting less kind of you know testing out new systems or strategy. I'm just trying to make marginal gains in what's already working for me um, because it's my sole income now so I just have to you know make sure that I'm just getting enough volume enough EV um, without necessarily you know it's just be too much analysis kind of a fine balance you need to do the analysis but then um yeah there's just never enough time to to do all of this unless you try deliberately like you make time for it yeah um sorry frederick just said your mic is laggy i'm sorry i don't know who you're talking about but anyway um i will say mate you're just fiddling again just ease up on the fiddling mate it's just uh oh sorry yeah Uh, sorry, there's so many questions that we've completely ignored because we went on a bit of a yeah. Uh, but, sorry, guys. But, but staying on the on the topic, I think Jacob um, Jacob said a few things. He says if you want to bet like a pro, your mental setting must be extremely strong. It's perfect for introverts. You are alone most of the time. Usually, you don't have anyone to share the joy with if you win, or share the frustration with if you lose. What I found out during the years, joy or happiness of winning the bets is never as big as pissing off or yeah, being pissed off or frustrated. If your bets lose, do you have the same? Yeah, I think I think everyone, I think everyone goes through that, right? I yeah. thought that was just me to begin with, but like I didn't enjoy the enjoy the wins as much as uh, hating the losses. But I think that's a there's some kind of like psychological uh, term, isn't there for that? Yeah, I mean. Uh, um... Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. I think with me, it's not an individual. It's, not, bet, it's a loss aversion or something. Yeah, yeah. It's. Um, oh, I wrote about it. I don't. I know what you mean, but it's. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It is. It is loss aversion. Yeah, exactly. It's just kind of we're, we're hardwired to to feel them more. I wouldn't say I, I feel like an individual loss, but if I lose like seven or eight in a row, that's my kind of. Uh, where my sort of patience get, 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 yeah. you know, a little bit frustrating. Um, but in terms of wins, you know, I, I allow myself a little smile, but if it's a big win, but I kind of quickly move on uh, yeah. because I know that, you know, I might have had a big win, but then I could have another, fo- you know, five losses in a row. Next week could be a bad week. Um, so I try not to dwell on it too much and just kind of, you know, move on to the, the next bet. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jacob points out something here. He says, if betting influences your mental health, your bets are yeah. probably too high. But I agree if you have long, uh, long time having a downswing, um, it is even tough if you have moderate money management. So, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I Jacob agree. mentioned one thing because it's a good question just about um, the advanced tools as well. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, because if anyone's interested in that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've learned a bit of Python. Um, uh, you know, dabbled a bit, of R, but honestly, I'm, I'm hopeless at it. Um, you, you don't need to know it to, to make a profit in sports betting, but if you want to be doing your own modeling and you want to be, you know, doing kind of razor sharp pricing, it's definitely very useful. One book that I would recommend, um, it's not actually sort of Python or R, but you can apply the same skills to it. Uh, it's a book called Statistical Sports Models in Excel. And it's by a guy called Andrew Mack. Uh, and he's very helpful. Like, I bought the book and, uh, I, you know, obviously, because I'm an idiot, I got stuck on, like, the first basic model that we were supposed to do. So I emailed him. Uh, and, you know, he, he, you know, he gave me a bit of advice and kind of tweaked what I was doing. Um, but I would highly recommend um, you know, looking at something like that. There's so many courses online, um, you know, for free. You, you know, you could, you could look at that, you know, for Python and R. You can download kind of data sets from, um, you know, Joseph Bookstyle's site from Football Data, or um, there's a couple of other sites where you can get these data sets to play around with, which would be interesting for betting. So, yeah, if, that, if that's an interest of yours, definitely. And AI, um, there's loads of, um, you know, sort of betting sites, being analysts who, who are using this kind of thing. So um, I think it's very useful to know, but I wouldn't say it's necessary. You know, plenty of people get by without it. But if you want to kind of get to the, you know, the improve your skill set, why not? Something I'd like to do in the future, but I think I'm just kind of too, too thick to to understand it really. So I've kind of given up for now. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Um, all right, let's. Uh, we'll maybe start to wrap things up now, mate. Uh, so I'll get to these last kind of questions. So if you guys got any. Any more questions for Neil or myself? Start. I think definitely try try and ask Alex some some questions because uh, you're not going to have much more of him soon. He's only got uh, yeah a few more left. Uh, Bernardo says your thoughts on the case the Spanish guys went on court against Bet three six five and managed to get their accounts unlimited. I, did you hear about this, mate? So it was um, yeah. This is oh, yeah. I mean, um, Miguel is his name. He went on the SBC podcast and talked about okay. getting his accounts yeah, yeah. Unlimited. I mean, this yeah. This has sort of been been around for a little while. Um, it's great. I would love you know if this was to happen in the UK. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean like if your accounts are unlimited, they're unlimited forever. I think the um, my understanding is you get kind of fourteen days, a kind of fourteen day notice. You know, if they don't want your business. I'll give you two weeks to hammer you know the shit out of them and then that's it you're done um so yeah but i mean that's still better than you know a lot of the time um in in the uk and i believe there might be i think betfair may be the same in spain as well so anyone who's got a spanish betfair or uh bet365 you know get in touch with me or alex and uh we put it to work <laughs> I can't, mate. I'm certainly not getting back to work on the on the Spanish yeah. Bet365. <laughs> yeah. That's uh yeah. that's well in my past. I mean, talk about mental health. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh blow me. Yeah. Oh god. We were, we were, that's an inside joke for, for us. We weren't yeah. there. We may be watching. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. That's why I was in such a fucking shit state at the start. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Darren Darren Williams says something about the Bologna Lazio match. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we can't help out too much there unless you're into Syria. Uh, I mean, I haven't really been following much lately. But obviously, yeah, if a mobile is out, then um, it's worth a look. But then you got it's all about price, isn't it? It's just you know, as a market overreacted to him being yeah. out, like who's coming in for him, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to give anything useful there. But let us know how you get on with that, Darren. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to start, uh, get through these questions. I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything. But he goes, uh, Donny Brasco says, uh, have you experimented something different, Neil, after reaching 8x then back to 4x? So, I mean, I assume the question's like, did you did you try something different after you lost essentially nearly half your bankroll? Yeah, um, after sort of 
crying myself to sleep and you know punching the pillow and screaming um yeah so so I, I again i looked at where the losses were coming from i think that's so i just i took a complete break um i mean to be honest i, w I was really busy anyway but um you know I, I took like a kind of a week off i didn't put any bets on my trade mate i just did some sims analyze you know wh where the losses came from or what kind of markets what kind of sports um you know looked at did i actually beat the closing line on these because on some of them I, I wasn't um and again kind of um, treaded more cautiously you know with, with that particular bookmaker um you know looked at exploring other ones that historically have been profitable for me have weren't an issue so i just kind of tried to increase volume on those um and yeah not not doing a, a huge amount different but part of you know going forward i think what i'm learning from it is again spending that time to actually do the analysis because i got a bit lazy I, I i did in the beginning i used to spend a bit of time each month analyzing you know how things had gone but um i think complacency sets in for me for sure and just i kind of thought oh, you know everything's going well what's the point of doing all this and it's just a waste of time you know it's just going to waste time if i know everything's fine but actually now like i mentioned before it's about marginal gains and you know trying to uh you know trying to tweak that yeah i'll quickly share my screen because i'll i'll, sh I'll quickly show my results with trade mate ever since i started doing way more big data tool sims and it's probably a good uh just a good way to show i mean this is completely like i'm on the very good side of variance here but ever since i started doing simulations and going really deep into my results like a lot deeper than you probably need to be but if you want to take this bloody seriously then i recommend doing this i've said it a million times on uh, the facebook group and, and probably on this stream too but the last two months when i like the beginning of august was when i really like went deep into it ever since then i've got an 8.6 percent roi and i know that i'm i know that i'm over achieving with these result with these results sorry but um like my closing edge is 3.7, which is the biggest I've ever seen it for myself personally. Really good, yeah. um, and this is the most beautiful graph I've ever seen myself produce my whole time using trade mate. Because if you want to see my real graph for my whole time using trade mate, that's what it looks like. And that doesn't look as bad as it actually is. But after 4,700 bets, I was profiting $1,000 and probably like a ROI of 0 0.01. So, <laughs> Um, if there's anything I can recommend to people using trade mate is to, if you want to take it very seriously and, and, and make a, a serious side income or use it part-time like myself or Neil uses full-time, um, then I uh, highly recommend doing that. Yeah. 100%. Uh, Darren Williams says, what's your maximum defeat run in your experience? So what's your, what's your biggest downswing? I could probably say. I, I mean, I've been going through my results weekly, updating my results weekly. I think my biggest losing week was like maybe six grand or, or something like that. I don't know if you have anything worse than that maybe, mate. Um, yeah, something similar. I, I, I mean, I don't tend to track sort of week to week. But I, did, I, I do remember once I did 17 casino offers in a row and I lost all of them. So I, that, that would have been easily a few grand um so yeah yeah it happens but then the 18th one is a big win so yeah i think i've won i'm mean, sorry i think i've lost six grand in a day too like that's i mean it depends what your staking's like but yeah, exactly I mean, yeah. it's kind of yeah, losing that amount of money isn't too crazy when your bank rolls i mean mine's like thirty thousand, so it's not the craziest thing um Nesh says, hey, Neil, how did your Euro 2020 experiment go? We kind of talked about this a lot already, mate. So yeah, you if you wanted to actually, give... yeah, if you wanted to have a look or if anyone else wants to, just because um, I did write it and, you know, put the effort in. So um, if yes, you look on my blog, there's a um, kind of analysis. I went through um, the tournament, all the bets I did, what went well, what didn't, uh, what I might do differently next time. So if you're interested in following the process, then... Uh, yeah, check out my blog and then uh, we can have a read right. there. I am uh, I should be your publicist, mate. Watch this. Look at <laughs> that. People can go check that out. I've just put the link in the – I assume that goes wow, into the nice YouTube one. comments. Yeah. So uh, people can go check that out. Good, good read. Um, Gary Burke says, do you guys bother much with the international breaks? 
personally, I just follow trade mate for the most part, but even then I kind of just take the big edges because I know it's most likely going to be a pretty inefficient market because it's just a lots of new stuff going on. I, I assume the team lineups are going to be very unpredictable mm-hmm. at times too. So I think, I think international break because the soccer season is so hectic uh, in terms of how many fixtures there are every every week like this weekend and the last two months i think international breaks a bloody good time to go go give yourself a little weekend away somewhere yeah i, yeah. I mean I, I quite i quite <laughs> like the international breaks i, I mean um from a trading perspective i saw I, I seem to do better on the international breaks than um you know kind of regular games i think maybe because there's just less games at the same time so you can kind of um, drill into detail, like in the Euros, um, and and you do get a lot of mismatches. You know, you get a lot of big teams who maybe get, get a bit complacent. They might go a goal down, or they might take you know forty minutes or something to break down someone like San Marino. So you can find a bit of value in play as well uh, and those kind of things. But um, yeah, I mean, the, there is football overload. It is a nice time to reset and recharge. I think a lot of kind of pro tipsters and people in the in the industry that that is their time really to, to kind of switch yeah. off for a little bit yeah nice uh tom Payne says hopefully alex will keep the sunday streams going and podcast going if he is leaving trade mate yeah I, i'm not i'm not too sure at the moment maybe do a podcast here and there maybe do a live stream here and there but yeah it'll be very it could be abs- I could be doing absolutely zero. My my future is very much up in the air at the moment. I have no idea what I want to do. So uh, hopefully I can give you guys more definitive answers around that. You will be later. missed and from all the comments I saw on your, your Twitter. There's a lot of love. So um, That's yeah, mate. imagine if all those people hugged me, mate. I'd feel feel even more love. Twitter hugs. <laughs> How good are they? Um, Jacob says I have books i have those books both are very useful to, oh i think he's talking about the andrew mack books right yeah yeah <clears throat> yep. um all right last question here no worries nesh oh my god we just got the comment of all comments <laughs> from, oh we're getting spam mate by webcams hot girls and boys hot girls and boys something Video for show. everyone let me just quickly block this person and hopefully those comments will stop Yes, lovely. They're blocked now. Thank you very much. I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully things are going well for you guys. Nesh fourteen eight eight says, "Do you place any in play bets?" Here, do you want to go first, mate? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I do. Uh, it's not like a big proportion of what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, occasionally I'll spot something in play, and it, it, that's worth doing. Yeah, for sure. But I would yep. say, you know, seventy thirty split. 80-20, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and for myself, I only place in play bets on the UFC. But even that, like if you took all of my UFC bets pre-game versus in play, it's like 98% to 2%. So, um, yeah, a lot more time spent doing pre-game stuff. All right, mate. I think that just about does it. We've been going for an hour 15. Oh, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you some more questions. Oh, we, so we're doing another one next week. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I think I planned out to do another Sunday streams next week. I think that'll be my last one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. I was, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if people want to see it, I can come on and just talk by myself, or you can come back on, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm very much, uh, I'm I very much. I can happy interview. To... Yeah, because so I, I want to ask you loads of questions. I kind of wanted to today, actually. Just to be good, maybe to get like a. A review you know like a kind of awards should we do an awards show awards show yeah i saw yeah. you wanted to ask me about like favorite podcast guests and, yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff but i i mean i i know that's an interesting question for everyone's answer but i feel like it's maybe slightly rude because if i if i pick someone one person or like i pick five people or something i feel like it's I don't know. I feel like a bit of a prick to everyone else that's given up their time to come on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, yeah, I could, I was going to say, I can tell you the ones who are absolutely awful, but even that's probably even, even worse. That's so. probably worse yeah. <laughs> oh, classic, but yeah, maybe, uh, maybe next week, next Sunday. <clears throat> I mean, if you, if you're around, mate, 
we yeah, can yeah. Uh, we can go same time and just have a have a chin wag again. I think I think I mean the, the audience has been great today. There's been plenty of viewers better yeah, than the questions. better than the normal three that that watch every Sunday. So <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe we can uh, maybe we can make a date next this time next week, mate. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. All right. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for all the <clears throat> questions. Enjoyed this. Yeah. No, yeah, thanks to the audience. They're the they're the ones that help us get through an hour and fifteen. Otherwise we've got nothing else to talk about. So <laughs> well done to well done to all the questions. Uh Primetime Sports says good luck this season, people, betting this season. Yeah, so, you too. Lovely words. We need that. Um but yeah, we'll be back. Uh let's go. We'll go next week. Mon oh sorry, what's that Sunday night for you guys? Same time next week. We will be back, but people that are watching this on replay, um, if you've got any other questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them later this week. Uh, anyone watching right now, a like on the stream would be sensational. Uh, subscribe to the channel if it's your first time around. But most of all, thanks everyone for, for joining along for the for the live portion of this and, and sending in your questions. And thanks for Neil for coming back on, mate. You've uh, always been a boy. It's been a pleasure having you on, mate, and I've enjoyed enjoyed chatting as always. So uh, as I said, we'll be back next week. I'll get my little outro video ready to rumble, and, uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk soon, mate. Awesome. Or maybe I'll give you a bit of – for people that have never met Neil before, uh, you can find him on Twitter at My Bed or Life. I forget, I forget I have to do all this good stuff. Yeah, really and good. <laughs> <laughs> As you saw on the on the uh, comment section, you can go to his blog at mybetterlife.com, read his blog. Um, anything else you want to flog, mate? Uh, nothing for now, but hopefully uh, some exciting stuff. We can uh, clickbait you into tuning in next week. Yes. That. Yeah. Yes. When when I have uh, when I have a little bit less ambiguity around my future, maybe we can <laughs> share some things with people. But we will see, mate. All right. Tremendous stuff. Catch you guys later. So, bye, guys.